Hello everybody, welcome to a Slay the Spire beginner's guide and tutorial for how to play this game. If you are clicking on this video, there's a chance you just picked up Slay the Spire and you want some tips and tricks on how to play this great game. Or maybe you just love certain content creators who upload a lot of Slay the Spire content, cough cough me, and you want to know what's going on in this game so you can enjoy some great content. Let's explain what Slay the Spire is. This is a deck building roguelite, similar to a game like The Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, uh, in the fact that when you start the game, each run you do is going to reset you at square one. Now, this game is a deck builder, meaning it's a bit more strategic. It involves uh, carefully playing turns to get the best benefit out of the game and traverse through the Spire to win a run. Let's hop right in, right? So at the beginning, you're going to have three options in your play menu. Two of these are going to be locked at the beginning, the daily climb and custom. The daily climb, uh, consider it a daily challenge. Uh, these are curated to have different modifiers, and they're normally a little challenging if you've never played the game before. Custom allows you to make your own run with your own modifiers, uh, and then you can share those runs with other people. For us today, we're going to stick with standard, which is what you're going to see when you start up the game. You're also going to then be able to pick between the four characters in the game, the Ironclad, the Silent, the Defect, and the Watcher, but these three are going to be locked at the beginning, and we'll talk about each of them later on in this video. So let's start with the Ironclad. This is the character you're going to have unlocked. Let's play as him. So the Ironclad has a couple of characteristics about him. He's the remaining soldier of the Ironclads, sold his soul to harness demonic energies. He starts with 80 health, 99 gold and this burning blood which is a relic and we're going to talk about relics later as these are very very important to the game so at the end of each combat he's going to heal for 6 hp now the game does have an interesting way of handling difficulty where it has this ascension mode so at the beginning you're not even going to have the option to go into ascension mode you're going to need to win a run first before you can enter ascension but then there's 20 levels of ascension that you can climb with each one being more difficult than the last it's incredibly hard to win ascension level 20. Uh, it's something that even i have not done yet but you'll get there eventually uh, as long as you keep on learning and playing the game so let's embark on our first run as the ironclad here and there's a lot to take in once you get into this run here so to start we're going to talk to neo which is the big whale dude and he's going to give you some options uh, to deal with on your run i'm going to choose to just take max hp plus eight which is going to increase our max hp up here and then we're going to talk okay so let's talk about everything you can see here on the screen so first of all you're going to be asked to put your name in at the beginning so i am tyler the ironclad Here's your hit points, your HP on your run. Uh, we just increased ours by eight, but we're gonna start at 80 as the Ironclad. We have 99 gold. Gold is spent throughout the game in either events or in shops uh, to buy cards, buy relics, or buy potions, which are stored right here next to the money. Your potion slots, these are items that can be used during combat. You can get these by clearing rooms or by buying them in shops, uh, and they can offer a pretty big benefit during your run they're one-time use uh, but when you use them you're gonna see that they help out a good deal over here we have the map this is the current map of the dungeon and there's a lot to take in here and it might, it might be overwhelming to look at at the beginning so you're gonna start at the bottom and you're gonna work your way up all the way to the top of the spire this is the final boss for the floor there's three different bosses per floor uh, and each picture that it shows indicates a different boss so I know that this is the Guardian, and I know all the attacks of the Guardian, but you might not, uh, and that's, that's okay, because you're going to want to go in kind of blind and figure out the game for yourself eventually. So if we start at the bottom, you're going to see that we have four choices of where to go, and we're actually going to just let uh, that happen. So once I leave, we now can pick where we're going. So these four at the bottom are basic enemies. Uh, in these enemies, there can be... Uh, usually one to three enemies in a room and they're kind of standard enemies they're not going to hit for insane amounts they're not going to uh be too hard to kill here on the first floor but when you kill them they're going to drop some money they're going to drop a new card that you can add to your deck uh, and they might drop a potion or another benefit Here's a shop. A shop is where you can spend your money to buy cards, relics, potions, or even destroy a card in your deck, which allows you to thin it out so you draw your better cards. 
Here is a unknown spot, a question mark. These are normally events, uh, which can give you a ton of benefits, and we're gonna hope to see some events here shortly once I show you the combat style of the game. But these can also include shops, enemies, uh, even a relic that you can get. So question marks are pretty important uh, and can be a good place to start when you're uh, beginning your Slay the Spire run. As we move further up, you can see the rest site. Uh, this is a campfire where you can regenerate your HP or smith your cards, and we'll talk about what that means uh, when we get there. Here is a elite enemy. These are harder enemies in the Spire that hit for a lot more uh, damage and can be sometimes pretty difficult to defeat, but you get a relic by defeating them, and relics are really strong passive items that you encounter throughout your run. We're going to show off some relics later on in this video. Here's a treasure chest. These provide you with a relic, and you're guaranteed one of these per floor that you play. Uh, you'll see that every path that you can go down ends up running into one of these treasure chests. Now, whether or not you take the relic that's inside the chest is solely up to you. Uh, there are rare cases in which you don't want to take relics, uh, but for your first run, you should probably experiment and take everything that you can. And then, like I said, finally at the end, you have your final boss. This change is based on the run that you're on. Uh, but it's important to play the game a bunch and learn the three bosses on each of the three floors of the game because you can start to plan around them and understand how to uh, kill them in the best way possible. So let's look at the combat style of the game. We're going to choose this enemy so we can hit a couple question marks and start our run. So what is going on on the screen? Well, since this is a deck builder, all of our damage that we're doing, all of the uh, core gameplay mechanics of the game involve the cards in our deck. So let's take a look at our deck and see what's going on. So up here at the top uh, is our deck and we can see that there are 10 cards currently in our deck. This will always be the same as you play as the Ironclad. Uh, you have five strikes, four defends, and bash. We're going to talk about bash in a little bit more detail when we go into card effects, but let's start by just talking about the core gameplay mechanics of this game. You have cards that are attacks, and you have cards that are skills. Attacks tend to hit enemies uh, and deal damage to them, while defends are normally uh, more skill-based cards that can provide block to you so you can defend against enemy attacks, or they can apply effects to enemies to make your life easier. So as the Ironclad, we have five strikes. These are going to do six damage per uh, time you use them when you hit an enemy, and we have some defends that are going to gain us five blocks so we can block our enemy's attacks. So once we return, you'll see that we drew five cards at the start of our turn. Uh, all characters draw five cards except for the Silent, who will draw an additional two cards at the start of combat. And then you'll see that we have the five other cards in our draw pile. So we saw we have five strikes, four defends, and a bash. We've drawn four of our strikes and one defend, so we know that our draw pile is going to have bash, three defends, and a strike. This is not shown in order, but we do know we're going to draw those five cards on our next turn. So now we can choose to play, and this is where the core gameplay comes in. We start with three energy as the Ironclad, uh, and in fact, every character starts with three energy. This means that we can play uh, three one-cost cards, or a two-cost card and a one-cost card, or five zero-cost cards, uh, and we'll encounter a bunch of cards over the course of the run. So, uh, let's look at what our enemies are doing. So here's a little louse, uh, two little louses for that matter. This guy is going to attack us for five damage, and that's seen over his head. He's going to attack us for six damage, also super rude. So they each also have a benefit called curl up. So when they receive attack damage, they're going to roll up and they're going to gain four block, and they can only do this once per combat. So I'm looking at this scenario, I see that I'm getting hit for 11, and I go, yeah, I think I want to defend so I can block some of that 11 damage coming in. So I'm going to play a block for 5. So now we've kind of immobilized this guy. Uh, he's not going to hit us for anything because the 5 is going to cancel out the 5, but he's still going to hit us for 6, and there's not much we can do about that because we didn't draw any other defense. So now I have two, uh, 2 energy, I can play 2 of these strikes. Let's hit one on each of them and see what happens. So we'll hit this guy, he's gonna curl up and gain four block, and then we'll hit this guy, and he's gonna curl up and gain four block. So now we're out of energy, we can't do anything else, so we're gonna end our turn. So our hand gets discarded, 
uh, and goes into our discard pile. Uh, these are the five cards we had on the last turn. And then our draw pile draws five more cards and we get going yet again. So now we can take a look at Bash, which is a little bit of an interesting card because it applies a effect to our enemies. So it applies Vulnerable. Vulnerable creatures take 50% more damage from attacks. Now, this isn't a great opportunity to show you how Bash works, so I'll show you in a bit more detail shortly. But we can kill them because this does 8 damage and he goes away. And then since this guy's dealing 5, I'd rather not use a strike because this isn't going to kill him. I'd rather just defend that 5. So now he's going to attack us. He's now planning to buff, so he's not attacking us in the slightest. Uh, and luckily, we drew two strikes, so we can just kill him. So that's our first room of combat on the run. So now we get a little bit of gold, 18 for that matter, and we can add a card to our deck. And now we have three cards that we can choose from. So let's take a look at uh, these three cards. Pommel Strike, deal nine damage, draw one card. So maybe you want to be able to draw cards more quickly from your draw pile. This is a great card to add. Feel no pain. Whenever a card is exhausted, gain three block. So this is a unique card that's known as a power in the run. And powers, once you play them, get exhausted and that effect stays with you for the rest of the combat. So now if we had any cards that exhausted, and there are many in the game, we're gonna gain three block whenever we exhaust one of those cards. Finally, we have Clash. So it can only be played if every card in your hand is in attack. And if it is played, it deals 14 damage to an enemy. So this is where you get into the strategy of the game, which I'm not going to dwell a ton on in this video. Uh, Feel No Pain offers us close to zero benefit because we don't exhaust any cards. Nothing in our deck exhausts. So I don't think that Feel No Pain is very good. And Clash, while it could be okay, uh, it's pretty likely that we're going to draw defends on our turn because we have four of them. So we'd have to play the defends in order to play Clash. I think that Pommel Strike is just a better card to add. So now we can add Pommel Strike. That goes into our deck. And now on our next combat, we're going to be drawing five cards and Pommel Strike might be one of them. That's the core gameplay loop of the game. So now let's take a look at and see if we can get an event here. So the first question mark we go to is an event. And these are super interesting to gain benefit on your run. So this is Scrap Ooze. As you walk into a room, you hear a gurgling and grinding of metals. It's a slime-like creature that ate too much scrap. We can reach inside of it and try to get some treasure. So now you can see, we can lose 3 HP and we get a 25% chance to find a relic. So I'll do it. So we lost 3 HP, we're down to 85. Uh, and we didn't get a relic out of it. So now we can lose 4 HP, we have a 35% chance. And there we go, we got a relic, and then we got Molten Egg. Uh, whenever you add an attack into your deck, upgrade it. So upgrading it is what I talked about at the rest stations, where you can smith cards. And this is a great time to talk about it, I think. So when you have cards in your deck, uh, and you reach a rest site, you'll be able to smith and upgrade them. Uh, or with Molten Egg, whenever we add an attack, into our deck, which Pommel Strike is an attack, Bash is an attack, these strikes are attacks, it'll be upgraded. So if you right click on the card in your, well, I suppose it's left click now, uh, left click on the card in your deck, you can see view upgrade on the bottom. If you upgrade the strike, it is now going to do nine damage instead of just six. And all cards have a unique upgrade that you can do. So defend, we go to eight block instead of five. This Bash, instead of applying two vulnerable, it's going to apply three and do an additional two damage. And Pommel Strike, another reason why I really like this card, actually allows you to now draw two cards instead of one and does an additional damage. So upgrading your cards can be pretty valuable, but normally you have to choose between resting and restoring your HP or smithing cards. And that can be a difficult decision to make. So, I think at this point we should hop into looking at a couple more cards in the game and see how they work. So let's talk a little bit more about Bash as a card, since we didn't see exactly what it means to apply Vulnerable on a run. So Vulnerable creatures are going to take 50% more damage from attacks. So let's use Bash on one of these uh, critters and see what it does to them. So I'm going to hit this guy. So we did 8 damage to him, 13 minus 8, he's at 5, and now he has 2 vulnerable, which means he's going to take 50% more damage from my attacks for the length of time of the card. So since Bash applies 2 vulnerable, 
he's going to have this effect for two turns. So now, uh, if we mouse over here, if we attack this guy with a strike, it's only going to do six. But if we attack this guy with the strike, now it's going to do nine because it's doing 50% more damage and 50% of six is three. Three plus six is nine. So now we could kill this guy easily. Uh, we're going to take 10 in the process, but that's life, right? So here you can see that I switched to Silent, and we're going to go into detail about the other characters in the game in a second, but I wanted to talk more about effects on cards, and here we have another nice card, Neutralize, which the Silent starts with. So Neutralize deals 3 damage to an enemy, but also applies weakness. So weakness, like vulnerability, is an effect that can be put on an enemy, and weakness is going to deal 25% less damage when that enemy attacks us. So here you can see this guy's doing 8 damage currently. If I apply weakness to him, now he's only going to do 6 damage, uh, because 25% of 8 uh, is going to bring that down to 6. Uh, so weakness is pretty important to uh, try to limit the amount of damage coming into your characters. Another interesting effect that you can see on a card here is Survivor, which forces us to discard a card when we play it. We can block for 8, but it discards a card. So we can block for 8, and this guy is no longer going to do damage, but I have to discard a card in my hand. And I'll probably choose to discard the defend, because we're not going to want to play that. We already have uh, the amount of block we need. So now I can go in and I can hit these guys uh, for the last two remaining energy since I have the strikes and everything has gone great. So let's talk a little bit about the characters in the game besides the Ironclad. So here is the Silent who starts with 70 HP unlike the 80 from the Ironclad, 99 gold and starts with a different relic, the Ring of the Snake. So at the start of each combat you're going to draw an additional two cards. So let's hop into a run and see what's going on with the Silent here. I'm going to take my max HP plus 7, uh, and then I'm going to leave and hop into our first combat. Now you could plan out uh, which route you want to go down. For the sake of what I'm doing, I'm just going to choose this guy and go. So now, instead of drawing 5 cards, you'll see that we drew 7, because the Ring of the Snake is going to draw an additional 2 cards. So the Silence deck is pretty similar to the Ironclad, except you'll see that there's no Bash for this character. Uh, instead, we have 5 Strikes, 5 Defends, Neutralize, which we just saw, and Survivor that we just saw. So the Silent plays pretty different from the Ironclad in the fact that there's different archetypes that you can build for that character. Ironclad, since it can take more damage since it heals at the end of its turn, has more cards that hit himself, and he tends to be a little bit more of a brawler class build, where he tries to hit enemies hard and fast, whereas the Silent plays more skill based, there's more discarding cards, there's a poison deck that you can build, uh, there's shivs that are zero cost cards that don't cost anything to play, but they do a small amount of damage, and sometimes that can be the way that you build your run. And that's where Slay the Spire is unique. There's so many ways to build a deck that works that you find yourself constantly coming up with new ways to win the game. The Defect starts with 75 health and 99 gold, and this is a unique character that requires a little bit more brain power to figure out what's going on, because at the start of each combat, he's going to channel one lightning, and we're going to see what lightning is momentarily. So I'm going to upgrade a card at the start here, uh, and what card do I want to upgrade? Let's just upgrade a strike. Uh, we, we know what upgrading does. That's going to give us uh, this strike to do 9 damage now. And then we can start our combat. So let's take a look at the defects deck before we figure out what in the world is going on over here. So we have 4 strikes, 4 defends, and then we have a zap and a dual cast. So zap channels 1 lightning, and dual cast evokes our next orb twice. So what in the world does that mean? Uh, we're going to figure that out right now. So the interesting part of the defect is he has these orbs over his head. So a lightning orb, which we start with because of cracked core, is going to deal 3 damage to a random enemy at the end of each turn. So we can see that by just ending turn here. This is going to hit him for 3 uh, due to our lightning orb. There we go. So he's now taken 3 damage. Now we'll take a look at dual cast. So evoking our orbs is going to deal 8 damage to a random enemy instead of 3, but it's going to make the orb go away. So what dual cast does is it's going to evoke this orb twice. So instead of doing 8 damage to this enemy, it's going to do 16 damage. 
that can be a pretty easy way to bring a lot of damage into this guy very quickly. Now we're out of lightning orbs, so if we want to get another one, we're going to have to play Zap to channel more lightning. So I'll defend and hit him for 9 since we upgraded our strike. We'll take 1 damage. And now hopefully we can draw Zap, which we did. We can dual cast to do 16 damage. And then hit him sadly only for 6. Or we can defend. And I think that defending is the smarter choice to only take 4 damage instead of taking uh, the total of 9. So now we drew our nice strike and we can kill him. This is how the defect plays. There are different orbs that you can get as the defect, uh, such as a frost orb that gives you block, or a dark orb that stacks up its damage so you can eventually do a massive attack to enemies. I'll let you figure out how to get those orbs uh, and how they play. Finally, added in an update this year in 2020, we have the Watcher, which is the newest character in Slay the Spire. With only 72 health uh, and starting with 99 gold, the Watcher starts with pure water, which at the start of each combat adds a miracle into your hand. Let's start and see what a miracle is. So here we have the Watcher, and we can look at her deck here. So she starts with 4 strikes and 4 defends, as per usual with most characters, but she also has these two unique cards, Eruption and Vigilance. So Eruption is going to deal 9 damage, and it's going to enter you into the Wrath form. The Wrath form uh, allows us to deal double damage to our opponent, but it's also going to have us take double damage as well, which can be pretty uh, difficult since our HP is pretty low. Vigilance allows us to gain a block and enter Calm, which when we leave Calm is going to give us extra energy so we can play more cards. So let's see how this plays out against these enemies. If I use Eruption on this guy, you're going to see uh, that our strikes are going to deal more damage after, but he's also going to be dealing 6 damage instead of 3, since it's going to do double damage. So now he's doing 6, but our strikes are doing 12 instead of 6. So we can smack him and kill him. Now you might be like, okay, we're out of energy, let's end our turn. But the Watcher starts with a Miracle. At the start of each combat, add a Miracle into your hand, and you'll see we have a zero cost Miracle here. So the Miracle allows us to gain energy, and this card retains, which means that when I end my turn, I'm still going to have this Miracle in my hand so I can use it on my next turn instead. Now, I'm going to do that so you can see it, but normally I think I would play the Miracle to hit this guy for 12. Now I'm still in the Wrath form, which is a little dangerous, but this guy isn't attacking us yet, so I think everything's going to be okay. I'm going to hit him for 12, and then I'm going to hit him for 12 again, and I'm going to end my turn because these defends aren't going to matter because he's not hitting us. So now we're going to draw uh, another strike and kill him. Our eruption is now doing 18 damage, but for the sake of showing you, let's enter Vigilance instead here. So this is going to give us 6 block, it's going to get us out of the Wrath state. Uh, so right now he's doing 16, when we enter Calm, he's going to go back to 8, because he's only doing uh, half of the double damage that we, we got with Eruption. So now we can kill him and move on. The Watcher is a very difficult character to play because you have to balance jumping between these two states, uh, and that can be pretty challenging to do. With that, you now have enough knowledge to hop in to Slay the Spire and attempt to win your first run. If you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can. Slay the Spire truly is a generational game and one of the best roguelites in the industry today. I love this game, it's my game of the year in 2019, and I'm looking forward to playing it more as the years go by. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next tips and tricks video. You have a good one, and goodbye.